Ah, there you are. Greetings. Well, I have kept quite silent during all these events and hysteria going on because, uh, well, I guess, in a way, it's sort of like seeing everything that was talked about, everything that was uttered in prophecy and written as well, uh, just sort of compounding into fruition. And I just was uh, a time to reflect on the Zeph report from the beginning. And, um, well, the Z report, whatever. And, uh, you know, shoot, we talked about, I remember writing. In the beginning, it was the written word. I, I did a lot of writing. And, and eventually moved to audio, but I'd always done these sort of crazy audios, and now I guess that's been replaced with me being in the studio and working away. Uh, I think yesterday there was maybe a couple hours break, so it wasn't completely straight through, maybe from like 4 o'clock till 7, 4 in the morning till 7, <laughs> and uh, mixing away, working away. It just seems that work, you know, until we get to the the pinnacle, uh, it's just an uphill climb, you know, audio. It, it really is. It's, uh, And then you always have to take time to rest your ears and not play things too loud, but, you know, on occasion loud and then back off because the ears are sensitive. Sound is sensitive. The Word of God is sound. Creation is sound. Sound and light um, combine, or are one, really, ultimately. But sound and light, and I guess in the end, light, because sound becomes inaudible and just becomes light at, at certain frequencies. And in a sense, the whole multidimensional world exists on different wavelengths. So, sonic wavelengths, including the Earth, is held in balance due to frequency, i.e. sound. So what's the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> the sound of one hand clapping. If you say that, you will be deemed enlightened. <laughs> The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven at the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. This is the, the verse that I am applying prophetically to the United States uh, powers that be. Uh, well, no, I mean, the powers that be and all that follow them, all that support them, so that would be, and their supporters. It seems the nation has run, you know, and, and at the same time, there is, um, well, let me continue in Psalm 14. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? And here it is again, the term, the term that Jesus used, you depart from, right, Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23, etc. He says, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Well, here we have it again. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? You that work iniquity, Jesus said. And David says, have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread. And call not upon the Lord. There were they in great fear, for God is the generation, is in the generation of the righteous. 
You have shamed the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. And that is the end of the psalm or song, which is sound, obviously, meant to be heard, meant to be heard in the ear. Because when you hear the word, what do you get? When you hear the word, you get a multi-dimensional experience. When you read the word, all too often if you're in your intellect, your intellectual capacity, you're getting, you know, a couple of dimensions, you know, you're taking it to heart, you're, you're, you're feeling something, but this, it, these words are meant to be heard, to be uttered and then heard, especially when scripture becomes prophetic, when dealing with, you know, your nation, your whatever nation you're in. Um, the Lord sees the children of men and wonders if there's any that understand, if there's any that would seek him. The answer is, they're too busy mocking God. They're too busy mocking the Lord in um, high places. And the Lord is allowing them to just carry on lavishly uh, that brings to mind the spirit of Babylon or the essence of Babylon the mystery Babylon, which is the second Babylon. And the second Babylon is the time of the vengeance of God. The vengeance is not meant for his, his own. But, but here's what she says. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double under her double according to her works in the cup which she, Babylon, hath filled uh, fell to her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says, saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. I'm a queen and am no widow and I shall see no sorrow. I am arrogant and I am sure of myself, and I know that I will see no sorrow because who's going to challenge me? And then, well, and then further to that, further to that, then the beast of Babylon, it's a revelation of Babylon, and, um, and they shall say, this beast is so powerful and and who can make war with this beast? You know, this is a, a thing that I see that I'm, you know, that I'm that that vexes me, and um, you know, it's it's nothing less than the advent of the the serpent Satan appearing upon the earth and being able, and then you get an idea of what hell is really like, because hell actually comes to earth, and. Um, you know, and uh, there's a time where the, where the Lord allows uh, a Lord allows the people to be overcome, and then and then John is saying, "I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, out of the sea, mind you, and upon his head ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy." And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, okay, I'm not going to go into the wounded head, but um, but they, that was referred to in, in Psalm 14, they worshipped the dragon and gave power to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And so this this becomes, uh, you know, very pertinent. Okay, well, that's why they're worshiping, you know, they're worshiping the dragon throughout time. And this beast appears as a result of the worship of the dragon. You know, in other words, they get what they want. This beast appears, and then the beast basically um, 
goes against all who have fidelity with God. But then the beast, um, you know, as, as in all things satanic, eventually turns on itself. Turns on itself. And this is another kind of a, a, a gleaning in the spirit. The beast, when he's done, you know, appearing to, to overcome those people of God. And then I would point to the nation of America and what it's doing in terms of uh, the military and manuals calling Christians uh, monsters or terrorists. There, yesterday there was a guy who wrote uh, uh, an article about the military saying that they're, they're, Christians are monsters and terrible people and they should not, uh, you know, basically, not only should they not be in the military, they shouldn't, if they are, they shouldn't be allowed to speak. They should be watched. These are people that are anathema. In other words, the tone of it was that the Christians should be rounded up and put in jail. They're monsters. This was written by a Jewish guy. Okay, just, you know, there's, a, there's an old war there as well. The war against Jesus, of course. So that programming of that Jewish man is, you know, probably very, very deep about hating Christians. And it just goes back to his own roots and his own prejudice. But it's taking on the color of law because the beast is alive and well in America. And the, um, this gives rise to the idea that something that most people never saw coming was this idea that being a man or woman of faith now makes you um, stigmatized socially like the Jews in Germany in the 1930s to be stigmatized. And then eventually it didn't get better. What happened is that stigma, that stigmatization then grew to intolerance, then grew to death camps. In other words, get on the bus, you'll be reunited with your family. Oh, sorry, you go to a death camp and then you're exterminated uh, with a program to exterminate all the Jews. The same kind of thing has now happened, which, um, and more and more documents come out from this uh, satanic government that, that basically, and of course a satanic government would be set up to, to attack Christians. They will be just like uh, Jews in the 1930s. Well, here's the thing. You know, part of this is God's blessing on the 501c3 churches. In other words, by having almost something surreal appear, that peaceful Christians that mean no harm to anyone, and usually when, they're, when harm is done to them, they'll pray for the person doing the harm and try to seek the Lord for guidance. You know, this is a peaceful, a good, and a productive um, and a contributing person to the society. This is a force of good, but it doesn't really matter to this beast because anything that is of the good must be eradicated. And they're all hypnotized and they're all uh, possessed. And, you know, the, the things they're doing are illogical. I know people sitting around now today trying to figure out, well, why are they doing this? And marveling, why are they doing that? And it's like, didn't you ever believe all the things foretold? You know, and on that same list, I guess you would have denominations, Catholic, Mormon, evangelical, uh, returning veterans who fought for the country, patriots, constitutionalists, truth seekers, and of course, conspiracy theorists. And, but none of the conspiracies that I've seen are false. They're all true. Pretty much. I mean, unless you get into the really weird stuff, that's not verifiable. But all the conspiracies about, no. Well, you know, governments attacking their own people to, to implement policies of totalitarianism and a police state on the people. You know, 10 years ago, that, that was just so extreme and so bizarre that you'd just be written off as a complete lunatic, someone that just buries himself or herself in the World Weekly News or the National Enquirer. And that's, you know, you're, you have like a some sort of defects in conspiracy, or like the you know Mel Gibson character portrayed in conspiracy theory. Uh, today, 
you know, basically with the last attack, um, pretty much <laughs> woke up a lot of people. And all over the internet, you see uh, the word false flag and more and more people speaking that. And people, and it, it, at the same time, that creates a kind of a hurry up mentality to the powers that be that are quickly trying to get and subdue the nation for the global order that they see. In other words, ultimately, you know, everything flows from the world government. And, uh, you know, as John F. Kennedy said, there's a plot to enslave every man, woman, and child, and before my term is over, I'm going to expose this. And then he was killed. Uh, he was talking about this. That's what he said. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy says, there's a plot to enslave every man, woman, and child. What you're seeing is the conquering and enslaving of the people, which we predicted for 10 years. I was talking with a friend who, you know, he'd been doing radio and said the same thing. He says, well, everything we talked about when the podcasting came in and the Lord made it possible for so many means of communication, so many people to have a blog or a radio show, yeah, so much of this information. So the knowledge was increased greatly. As it says in the end time in the book of Daniel, knowledge will be increased. Well, yeah, knowledge of what they're doing, God made a way so that everyone could hear, so that people are without excuse. There is no excuse for not seeing what's happened. Not seeing, for example, that the media is the same as the time of, of say, Adolf Hitler. They are propagandists, or Joseph Stalin, or Mao, or any of them. All bought and paid for, and there is no truth. There's just wrangling to try to get the enemy. And isn't this curious? The peaceful Christian is now the terrorist and now the enemy, which, as I said, is a gift of the Lord to the, uh, well, let's just be kind and call them the uh, Laodicean church, the lukewarm church that is 501c3. But really that's having a contract or an oath with the state, it kind of invalidates the church. But the point is, is that the Lord's reaching in to pull his people out because when you're told, and you know, the one thing about having been in churches before, the one thing I can tell you about them is they are never critical of the government. You know, even at, like I was there at 9-11 at the Calvary Chapel, no criticism whatsoever. If anyone said anything like a false flag, they, you'd be thrown out. They're complete worshipers of government. They take Romans 13 to mean that everything of government, law enforcement, anything is of God and therefore to be not questioned. I'll just put it that way. So these people would be the best friend that government ever had. They tell the people that these are, that they, 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 they told us they were Muslim terror. The official story is the correct story. And that story came from God at the official Calvary Chapel uh, rendition of it, is that it, there is no conspiracy. And, 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 you know, there was a national prayer and there was a, a day of prayer uh, for the victims of 9-11 and they were all participating in that. And um, they went with the official line. Many of these people of, say, Mormons, and in the end... If you believe in the rapture theory or the kind of theory of Jesus and Satan and the Mormonism uh, faith and various other things, you know, you know, you found a lot of apostasy. A lot of people, like at the Calvary Chapel, they kept pushing the rapture, pushing the rapture, pushing, you know, don't ever question the government. And furthermore, don't ever question the pastor because they come from God. And I said, yeah, but you've got satanic ritual abuse in here. Ah, no, 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 there is no such thing. And, and then, of course, people do get killed if they... Or in the past they have, because under the, color of dark, under the cover of darkness, they, they were able for a long time, that's any, any church organization or any organization at all, to be able to, uh, conformity just meant bowing your knee to Satan and allowing that into your church or into your life. So, so what I found uh, was just a lot of possessed people in a way. But when 9-11 happened, it was, again, the party line, kind of like Boston, the Bostonians, and, uh, and certainly I can understand it. I'm just saying the irony. The best friend that government, that homeland security, that anything that has to do with government ever had 
was the evangelical church Christian and who were already conformed to the state, already had been a part of the system, which, of course, is the complaint, right? They're part of the system. They're conformed to the system. Uh, so they're no problem and they're no threat. If anything, they're a force for good for government because, you know, or the powers that be, it's a better way of putting it, because they own the government. So they're a force for, for good because they're going to give cover to the people who own, you know, the fascist states of, of the world and who own, well, yeah, I, I'm not going to get into the conspiracy theory of the bankers own the governments and all that. There's a collusion between the corporation, the state, and the wealthy of the world, which is technically usually labeled as fascism throughout the world. But, I mean, you have kind of a combination going on here today. And I'll t I'm going to tell you what I think the whole point of it all is. But despite the irony of the Christian church being the best friend, and that goes for the Catholics, Catholics are totally tied into our society. They are not at all rebels. There's no rebels like Jesus and prophets and people like that. Everybody is conformed to the system. Everybody is compliant. Everybody is supportive of whatever narrative that the mainstream media spins. And everyone is docile when it comes to the dictates of the government. There should be no problem at all. In fact, it should be, there should be alliances between churches and, and all that and, uh, and, the, and the evil powers that be that, that want a totalitarian globe or whatever they want. Okay, so why would they then be labeled terrorists, including and then labeling evangelical uh, Catholic, talking about church Christians now, uh, people that believe the Bible too closely, and then the rest flows from there. If you're a Bible believer, if you believe the Bible is true, now you are labeled, you're, 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 you're deemed somehow um, evil, even though Barack Obama and Janet Napolitano have been, and others, have quoted scripture publicly in their public events. They have quoted scripture. Okay? Uh, but they've also mocked God as well. But, I mean, they've quoted scripture, and they've done that. Adolf Hitler did the same thing. He would quote scripture, and he would profess his faith in Jesus constantly in order to get his way. Because with Romans 13, if the leader says that, then the church will dumbly say, oh, well, it must be true because it comes from God. So, and then they will comply, which they did in Nazi Germany. But, so there must be a fear that at some point there would be a break between the official church, you know, denominational churches, and the government, so the government or the powers that be, and you see these forces of change happening and no votes count, nothing counts. And they're just like, it's like a tidal wave rolling over the society. And uh, the conforming is, you know, part of it has to do with the uh, immorality and pushing things like, you know, um, focus on things like gay marriage and, you know, things that are very, very important to them. Uh, abortion rights, gay marriage, and of course, free stuff. You know, that's the, that, that sums up this administration and, the gro and growing government and growing the totalitarian state and then eventually, under the color of law, as other dictators have done, locking down the people as evil who not only mean them no harm but are good contributors to society. I'll take it even a step further. People that contribute to society in the economy, who make jobs, who have jobs, but also who run businesses. These people are also vilified by the tax code. I mean, not called out. And many of them are Christian as well and, and, and have faith in, in different, you know, I mean, they're people of faith of many religions here. But the only one that's being singled out is Christianity. And to, again, because they must feel that where we're headed it would be unacceptable to the churches. For example, look at the fight, the Catholics, the ongoing Catholic fight regarding forced contraception. Now, it's always Satan's plan. This, this is, this is the, 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 the secret of Satanism. To get unwitting victims, for example, feeding people, like the, the movie Soylent Green, having people eat people, 
cannibalism, very satanic, uh, and then not tell them what it is. Having people eat GMO foods and not tell them what it is. In other words, create abominations and then feed it to them. Have, have people eating feces in some form and not tell them what it is. That is the ultimate satanic ritual. If you can get enough of these things going in society, make um, late-term abortion the preferred abortion. Make gay marriage the preferred form of marriage. So the whole gay marriage thing, it only has one purpose, and that is to destroy the concept of marriage and to denigrate the Bible, to blaspheme God. There is no other purpose for the gay marriage fiasco that's going on. It's a, it's a joke. It's pathetic. And for the gays to allow themselves to be used as a political tool, well, mo- many of them are also fans of uh, the way things are going. Let's just put it that way. And all the players involved. In other words, they're a fan of their own enslavement. The gays, like anyone else that facilitates the takeover, you know, this is just like the communist takeover of the Bolshevik revolution or any other revolution. You're in a revolution is what you are in. And they're figuring that people will wake up and get pissed. So they are, you know, they are, um, you know, pre-configuring, pre uh, predicting that that might happen and then labeling people now. The other part of it is there is a zeal to simply, and such hatred of God, not only in this administration, which is the, probably the most evil, God-hating thing I've ever seen on. I mean, I wasn't there with Stalin. I wasn't there with Hitler, but it's on the same level. And all the players involved are the same amoral, they're, they're life-hating, people-hating. And, you know, I think their aversion of love is you know, anal sex or something, or, or child sex, or some, you know, they're, they're, they're also making moves to legalize, and the teachers are all on board, so they're all part of this plot that Kennedy was trying to uh, expose. And what it is, is you see the people becoming enslaved, and I would say that the rate they're going, maybe you've got another year or two before people start realizing that they have lost their freedom and that they are slaves, and if they try to speak up or make a move or do anything, then there's punishment. So people become cowed and compliant and miserable. But that's been the history of the world, folks. That's the history of this world. And uh, there are people fighting back, of course. Um, I find it interesting, this is May 1st. People say, are you going to do a show with Brother Thomas? And it's like, well, I have to tell you, my... What I used to do, I no longer do. Change. Let, let's, let's, you know, they're not the only ones who change comes to. When change comes, it should be embraced as a gift. The gift to the church is this persecution uh, will, you know, force people off the fence and not allowed to see in church. And yes, there will be official brick and mortar building churches that will be facilitating and they will be making that, that if you're part of those, you're okay. There'll be that kind of divide. But people that um, don't want to drink the Kool-Aid anymore and believe the lies that the uh, compromised sellout pastors tell them will um, then be, you know, obviously, you know, deemed enemies of the state, even if they pay all their taxes, they follow all the laws, you, you know, the Lord wanted us to be blameless, right? To follow every law. and every, So if they do anything to you, when you've followed all the laws, you've been a good citizen. You've helped your fellow citizens. You've, you're only guilty of having faith. And if they kill you for that, then it's probably better you die for that and, you know, your reward is, is, uh, is your death. You know, because you're, you're now free to go. Do you want to sit here and watch the rest of it? You know, ultimately, they will destroy themselves. The path that this administration and the governments of the world seem to be on right now is a path of total self-destruction, not realizing they're so busy pointing out enemies. You know, evangelical Christians. I can tell you that if evangelical Christians are no enemy of the government, either are Catholics and Mormons. Many Mormons work in, in the uh, FBI and... Uh, 
and all that. So what's happening in those agencies is there's an internal war. And this is what we really, this is another vision, if you will, for me. This internal war, okay, so it's going to be between the secular satanic folk and, say, Christians. And I don't really care. I mean, I consider, you know, I don't, I'm not going to look at the apostasy of learning and say, oh, that means you're not, you know, the, the Mormons, I know they say they believe in Jesus. Let's just let, let it sit there for a second like that and um, consider the Mormons as being contributors to law enforcement, uh, various agencies, CIA, FBI, and all that, contributors to society, good for, for government because they, you know, the Secret Service and so forth has Mormons. The internal war, of course, and the military has Christians of all stripes. The documents being circulated are coming from military and Department of Homeland Security and places like that. So the idea is then there would be an internal war. Christians are the enemy. Imagine you're the Secret Service protecting the president who would give his life, take a bullet for the president, and then you're, he turns around and calls you a terrorist or his, administra- you know, his government how you would feel. They know how you'll feel, so then they want to attack, figuring they're going to do something that's going to make you feel bad, and then, then because you feel bad, now you're, you're the criminal if you have feelings about it one way or the other. The only thing that is acceptable is complete worship, bowing down completely and keeping your mouth shut. Well, that just isn't the way it is with the Lord. He's making it so that people have to make a choice. And if the government becomes the, the, the purveyor of, you know, this will be a, you know, every religion will be tolerated, every form of sex and marriage tolerated, but we will not tolerate Christians. We will not tolerate uh, sex between a man and a woman. We will not tolerate marriage between a man and a woman. We will only try to make all this evil stuff, which is sick abominations, you know, pedophilia, whatever, what are all the different forms we're going to make this to be the natural way and the traditional way to be perverted and antisocial. That is Satan. And the people are illogical because Satan and the whole plan of evil is in itself illogical. Um, you know, leftists who are Satanists are illogical. The things they want to do make no sense. For example, why wouldn't the government um, increase their revenues by increasing business? Because they don't want to. They want to decrease revenues and confiscate the money and put people in chains. They're not interested in fixing anything. The goal is to fail, which I told you a long time ago. So many supporters of Obama and others... Thought I was crazy. Now, now they're, they're thinking twice. Because anyone who helps him get there, or if, if it's him or the next dictator to come along, or whoever it is, uh, basically all of you who facilitate all this and who go along and who've gone along in your lives, you're coming right now to a point where it's going to be very hard for you to, to take that next step of going along. Because, you, you know, it's worked so far... And, you know, you've had a monkey on your back. You know, you realize that you're, you're compromised. You've, you've lied. You've looked the other way. You've done what you had to do, you, you've thought, to get by in this world. But, you see, you're being thrown under the bus now. You Mormons and Catholics and evangelicals, you've, uh, not only do you have false information in your churches, because it's all confused, you know, with the beast, um, now you're that now the very people that you supported the very society you supported uh all your lives is suddenly turning against you as the villain when you've done nothing wrong you know you believe in your bible you uh go to your church you participate you you know have a business or you work for someone in the community you have a family you have two cars and you know, you're being uh, warred against economically and 
spiritually because this is not about logic and the kinds of things you see on the ground. This is a spiritual battle that's gone physical. The battle is against God, ladies and gentlemen. That's always been the battle on this planet. That's all that's ever gone on, and that's all history is, a story of God and people that rebel against him and the consequences of that rebellion. There really isn't any other story. You know, whether or not a king is good or not always is weighed as per his faith, because without faith, then you become narcissistic, you worship yourself, your pleasures, your belly is your God. I don't know about you, but when my belly is my God, and I just kind of obsess on pleasures, you know, getting the good tickets, go, going to the good spot, doing the, you know, that sort of thing. Um, eventually, I just get really depressed because I need more. You know, I've always been this kind of person that's, you know, half here and half wanting so much to looking around for where my home went, you know, and uh, what happened? <laughs> How did I wind up here? There's been that throughout my life, and people always would say that, you know, you're always talking about God, you're always talking about philosophy, you're always, talk, you're always you know, asking these, you know, d dwelling on all these questions. Why can't you just be happy and have a good time? And, and the answer is because that's not life to me, you idiot. That's death. Having no curiosity, just being a mindless idiot going along, or as Jackson Brown put it, uh, I'll be a happy idiot struggling for the legal tender. It's never been enough for me regarding legal tender. That's, that hasn't been enough to sell out for, for paper that's become worthless. But now you see, what's so exciting to me is that everyone is now, we're all on the same page. You see, there's no more, you know, I'm in, you're out. I'm cool, you're not. Kind of, there's, I'm a winner, you're a loser. That's gone. You're all equally losers now. All you who thought you had a life and a future, it's gone. We told you that on the election. You know, the election was obviously rigged. And, um, you know, everything's rigged. Everything is false. Everything is theater. Every uh, terror attack, every terror attack you've ever witnessed in your life has been false flag. If, or if you like, planned and advanced and... And, and, you know, p actors put up to do the thing and blamed, but it's really a, a group effort on the part of every... Wars are the same thing. Countries might ar arrange war with each other as a way of getting out of a bad economy. So the planners plan the war from both sides. Then they act like the other one's the enemy, let's get them. And they give you propaganda through the airwaves of, yes, we're advancing on the enemy and we're making great progress. Now there's a whole bunch of new enemies. I wonder how my long-lost brothers and sisters of churchianity feel now that they've been officially vilified. But don't, don't worry. The, China has uh, churches. Christians are illegal in China, but there's official churches you can go to. So I suppose, how low can you sell out, Mr. Pastor? Well, you'll find out. And, oh, do they get angry. But there will be the official state religion for the poor fools that need retraining to know that it's really about taking care of your brother and sister and not denying those needs. You know, what, what was the biggest thing that's happened in Washington is a guy comes out and admits he's gay, which to me seems like the most trivial, almost ridiculous thing. If you, I don't see what the big deal is. Like there's a big evil enemy that's that's going to jump on someone for being gay, like a, a big, giant, evil enemy that's prevented this guy from just being able to live his normal life. Th they invent these enemies so they can then deem a certain group of people the enemy and then hit them with the full force of the media. And eventually, as I said, when it gets out of control, they round them up and off to the death camps you go. And um, if we are facing that sort of thing, which I'm just basically repeating history. This is nothing new. But the fact that the people are cheering it on, I saw Boston um, cheering on a lockdown of 9,000 militarized troops 
to get one teenager um, and people willing to give up all their rights because of that one who and all who bought the story that these two guys were the they just have to be wandering around with these bombs and blowing things up and uh, and sort of you know buying the narrative whatever the whatever the narrative was I think what they wanted to do is I mean this is conjecture we'll never know but I think what they wanted to do is bring out Christians to vilify them. And the media was just frothing. They just couldn't wait. They just can't wait to treat Christians like the Jews of Nazi Germany. They just can't wait to get them rounded up because they're evil. Because they don't believe in gay marriage. See, they believe in traditional marriage. Right there, that's it. They should be shot for that. You know, it's just, that's the, it's insane. And it makes no sense unless you're possessed with the devil and all you want to do is kill and destroy. So that's, and that's what we see when that topic comes up. They are fighting and fighting and fighting to wrangle themselves around to being able to harm other people. And then they figure no harm will come to them and they will not reap what they sow. They, they live deliciously. It's a big party. And just like the parties at the White House, those are designed to make you feel inferior. Those you're struggling you can't pay your bills, but in Washington, the Correspondence Center, they're living it up. They sit a queen, they are no widow, and they will see no sorrow. They will live on indefinitely while you become their slaves and their footstools because you're just no good, and they are. And um, it's the ultimate in stupidity because they ultimately will pay the price and they will burn. And it will be ugly. And some of them will actually know on that day, oh my God, what have I done? Some will say, and they might even repent, and that would be a good thing. But most won't. They will indignantly go on and say they deserve this world that they envision. All we have to do is get rid of the bad people, and then we've got it. You know? A real gay world, where everyone's gay, meaning gay and happy, or whatever they picture their utopia to be. You know, a world where um, birth take, takes place in the test tube and everyone's free to be, uh, to, to, to do whatever sexual proclivity or whatever indulgence they have. And they go, as long as it doesn't hurt other people. Well, I can tell you this, sex does hurt other people. Predatory sex leaves a scar on... Uh, uh, on people that have been the victims of that for their whole lives. Pedophilia, predatory type sex can actually turn a person from, to total guilt and shame to where they are unable to function as a normal human being. So what's the answer, according to this administration and the uh, social engineers? The answer is to have a lot more adult child sex so that it's not traumatizing for them. So it's more normal and acceptable as natural. And then there won't be these trauma victims who are unable to function. And when they say function, they mean sex. That's basically all that uh, the whole war is, is about. It seems like the devil and sex versus God. It's kind of something like that. But sex is used when it's not in the, the right position. Sex is a tool of... The devil, because it's not the sex, it's what gets into your mind and what gets into your soul in the process. What happens to your conscience? Where's the guilt and shame? Oh, you think you're going to just sleep with your neighbor's wife and think there are no consequences? You don't think there's a bit of your soul that gets broken off every time you have some illicit one-night stand or something like that? Every time you, uh, you know, or, or the whole homosexual culture of getting together and having uh, the mutual orgasms and all that, and just living for the orgasm, the, 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 the problem is your soul it ends up gone. You know, I've known a lot of people that went down that road of, you know, sex and drugs, and they just, they would admit that one day they look in the mirror and there's nobody there, and many committed suicide. Many gays committed suicide because they're not always young and pretty, you know, that's a big part of it. And then when you get older, if you don't have any money, a lot commit suicide. Because if you don't have money, you're out. They, they, they're a very cruel community in West Hollywood. Very cruel. 
there's a lot more victims than there are living. I'll just put it that way. And, and nothing was ever worked out. You know, it, it, uh, it begins with, um, you know, the whole power slave master thing. Well, sex becomes that. It becomes part of the hierarchy of a slave and a master. You're a slave. You do what you're told. You become a master. You tell others. So it reinforces the internal spiritual um, hierarchy of Satan in the sense of, uh, or let me just put it this way, the demonic realm, okay, which seeks to keep people enslaved and in bondage. And when you externalize this depravity, this real disrespect of sex, disrespect of our own bodies, disrespect of the word of God, disrespect of what should be the standard, what ends up happening is you externalize evil as good and then you externalize the enemy as being those who are good, those are the ones who need to be slain, when in actuality the, the end result will be the feast of God of Revelation 19 is all the people that perpetrated that war on good, that war on God, the war on good people, the war on righteous people, the war on um, people of faith, people of principle, eventuates in their own death. And how does their own death come? Well, the surprising thing is most of the time throughout history, there's been corruption in their midst because they are corrupt and they attack each other. So they basically eliminate, they uh, kill one another in the end. They, they, once they get their way, they, uh, you know, uh, Brutus stabs Caesar. Right? It's it, betray. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you live by betrayal and lies, if you're a politician who stands up there and lies every day to the people, you're going to be lied to, and you're going to be manipulated, and you're going to be taken down a path that you'll never recover from because you've lived a life of lies and deceit, as our as this administration and others have done. And they they go, oh, they may go to the presidential library and and still keep the charade going that somehow they're good people. When in actuality, they had to basically sell their soul just to even be there. Of course, it happened when they were children. But I'm just saying, you know, there's a, there's a further and further level of selling out. I mean, you can, you can get so you feel you're doing pretty good. And then, then all of a sudden they say, no, nope, that's not good enough. You got to go lower. Everyone else is. Come on, you know. And you want to still be a part of this. You want to still be on the boat or we'll throw you overboard. Okay, I'm with you guys. I'll do it. Okay, got to get rid of the Christians. You know, go coast to coast and just have lots of bad accidents happen to them. Ha, ha, ha. And then we will feel you are worthy. You have proven yourself as worthy. And we will support you now because you're worthy and you've proven yourselves. And so the pattern, of, you know, and so this is all obvious. So here comes the um, vision. So I had seen this internal war going on. And this will give you people pause, okay? The, the Christians have been warned. I mean, I think a lot of them, their eyes are opening, and they realize there's, you know, just like the Kennedy assassination, we just never really got the truth. 9-11 really not got the truth. Boston never really got the truth. But still the same feeling, the same vibe, the same horror that you're being overrun, overtaken. Why was Kennedy killed? Because he was going to expose the plot to enslave every man, woman, and child. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thing that gets you killed. Coming from a president of the United States saying that, it's unacceptable. So they have to conceal themselves, and they can't have presidents going off, jabbering on about uh, the New World Order or anything like that. Now they're a lot bolder, and they don't care if people talk about it. And um, they just figure victories in hand. And a global totalitarian state is, you know, uh, kind, of, kind of in the model of the Chinese, is imminent. And uh, all they got to do now is just get rid of the people that have a mind or a soul. And, and, they, and they're in. And, then they, and they got it by Jove. So here's the interruption. And I told you they never will get a new world order. I said, don't, don't follow the events too close. I mean, unless you, if you really believe... We're going to follow the events of the Bible and know it because millions of events occur and millions of these events are not in the Bible. There's some general outline of things 
And it could be read metaphorically, it could be read literally. It's this many, multidimensional document here, you know, regarding the seven trumpets, you know, and, 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 uh, and the great plagues to come upon the earth. And, of course, we see those in the making. We see all the, the stage set. Now, if you want to, but this is not in the Bible, so let me explain this. So, it, well, it is in a general way in the form of reap what you sow in judgment of God. They will, you're going to get a break, okay? Here's the good news today. You're going to get a break. Why? Because the internal war that's been raging for, I don't know how long, but, but certainly throughout our lifetimes, the internal war that's going on in the government and agencies and military, and military-industrial complex, which includes the government, corporations, all kinds of people, right? Their internal war that's going on is spilling out of control. I mean, it's absolutely out of control right now. <clears throat> the only reason that you're not focused on it is because the press has managed, you know, the mind control, the television is not showing it to you. So you, it doesn't exist unless you see it on TV. So um, you know, people killed all the time, you know, planes and accidents and whatnot. Uh, with a compliant press who will sit, do anything that they're told. They, there's no press. And absolutely uh, apathetic to see a guy like Brian Williams or any of these people on television, and Andrea Mitchell or CNN or, you know, Wolf Blitzer. There's another one who's just a completely owned and operated robot slave of the dictators. <laughs> I mean, he'll, he's like um, a marionette. You do whatever you want with him and he'll do it. You know, he'll t you tell him what to say, he'll say it. He's not interested in, in uh, reporting anything but gossip. So the internal war does not get play. But it is about to, and this is imminent, spill out into, and once it does, it isn't going back, spill out into the public eye. In other words, into the consciousness of the public that indeed the United States and many other countries and corporations and people are factionalized. The military is factionalized. There are the people in the military who take great offense with their enemy, who's also in the military, saying we sh Christians are the enemy. Okay, well, just that's one war. This is not just about a group of Christians versus the rest of the government. That's not it. These factions sometimes have other reasons. For example, this one over here has... Um, the drug trade, and they're able to make millions of dollars, and they want that turf. This other group over here wants that turf. So they're willing to go in and kill those government agents, them, themselves being also government agents, to take over the turf of, say, the slave trade, or whatever they're, they're involved in to make revenue, uh, being that it's a criminal enterprise. So all these criminal, it's like um, wars in Chicago, gangland wars, Val Capone. It's all about to go public, and you know the public does suffer because they sometimes get in the way, <laughs> and you know there's a there's a you know a massacre here or there, things happen. The point I'm trying to make is that this spills out uh, into the public, and you, people of the spirit, you are the witness that while they're preoccupied with each other, a lot of this other kind of policy of vilifying Christians of all things while the uh, administration quotes from the Bible all, all, good old Adolf um, <laughs> it's unbelievable it's, it's seriously amazing but uh, they're going to be so preoccupied with that and of course with that comes derivative trading you know what I mean causing a disaster but already buying put options options to sell so the further a stock or a, a, uh, goes down let's say the more money is made. So if you know the disasters that are going to happen ahead of time, you can just go bet on the market. For example, um, they'll bet on the drought. Then they'll cause it. Or they'll bet on a flood. And they'll cause it. And this all has to do with gambling. You know, rigging the game to make money in the stock market. Okay? And nobody, everyone turns a blind eye to that because that's the economy. We've got to keep that going. No one's going to stop and have an investigation that ties everything together, including terror attacks, weather, and all the derivatives they're trading based on those things 
if you can then manipulate the weather, if you can manipulate the uh, wars, if you can mani- manipulate terror, if you can manipulate all of everything you see as theater, then you're always making money because it's an inside game and, and you have it rigged. And so these people are very wealthy because they're busy stealing all the wealth from people who are playing by the rules and don't know anything and, and will not admit that there is a conspiracy of that magnitude. Anyway, so now they've sort of run out of... There's a war going on now amongst them all. So there could be one group of derivative traders versus another. And they have goons and guys with guns. And, you know, uh, you saw that there was a... The cartel of, of Mexico, they like to go around... Um, I saw the other day, someone put a video up of, of some woman having her head cut off. And I, uh, th- I thought it was fake then I realized it was real and, I'm, and then I realized well a lot of this is for show to show how you don't do a public execution cut someone's head off and walk around with it unless you're trying to intimidate people right that's the whole game but I don't I, I think that's a ruse I think these cartels are completely tied in and global and they're also tied in with this situation we're talking about and so when we say well People keep trying to find a conspiracy like, well, that the, the, the DA was, and his family were killed. You know, uh, there's a trial coming up, and if you don't do the right thing, you and your family are killed. Now, that's an old game. That's been going on forever. Okay. But, and that's part of the war I'm talking about. So the case never goes to trial because the DA and everyone else is threatened that if you have it go to trial, we'll just kill you. So you'll do what we say. And that's the, when you have that kind of power and that kind of might, then the rule of law is out the window, voting's out the window, everything is rigged. Now, there's a lot of you have known this for a long time. But it's got to be called what it is. The criminal enterprise of the world is always shifting because usually, like I say, throughout history, there's wars between one faction and another. So in the government, this criminal cabal organized evil, has run it for a long time. I mean, you know, look at John F. Kennedy. That was, what, the mid-60s? Uh, and it goes back from there. Okay? They're nothing new. I mean, Eisenhower warned about beware the, the criminal uh, military-industrial complex. And uh, so it ceases to be called criminal when there's so many people involved. And when there's so much factional fighting, what happens is people tend to want to blame, okay, the, the murders of various law enforcement and stuff, they want to blame it on the cartels of Mexico. I have news for you. The cartels of Mexico are multinational corporations at this point and completely tied in with the multinational corporate sort of fascist global police state and, and are running it. <laughs> and, uh, and they, you know, they basically got their turf and how they do it by violence and intimidation. There is no rule of law in Mexico because they run all the towns and anywhere they go, they just say, well, look, you know what? You don't do what we say, uh, the president's gone. You don't do what we say, the, uh, the sheriff is gone. If you don't let my people out of jail, um, you, you, know, you, the jailer, and all your family will be dead. And with that kind of intimidation, of course, what are people going to do? They're going to comply. Then what happens? Power cedes to that cartel, then they end up running Mexico. Well, I have news for you. They're part of this whole thing that's a global phenomenon. And then you have elements of, say, Mossad fighting Mossad, um, NSA fighting NSA, CIA fighting CIA, good people. And then you see it's all the same spiritual battle coming to a head. And as it comes to a head, great violence is done upon the earth as a judgment of God and plague. Now here's where we draw it right back to front and center. What's going on? It's the same spiritual battle. But because it's going to be factionalized and fragmented and asymmetrical, you will see that there'll be a, the the, the social, you know, making people evil who are good citizens, all that kind of stuff is going to take a backseat to the, you know, weekly violence of attacks that will eventually be, you know, someone like Alex Jones may say, get to the bottom of it and, um, you know, he'll say, well, it's this. I'm not sure he sees the whole, I guess he does to a certain extent, sees the whole worldview, but he keeps looking for a culprit here, or the Bilderbergs, or 
And I'm, and I'm saying, well, you know what it really is? It's a spiritual battle, ultimately. But these factions then, therefore, it's going to be hard to label them, is what I'm saying, for the, for the people that, that, that do that sort of thing for a living. Uh, because it's going to be a mixture of everything, and it's going to be hard to see the pattern. You'll see something over here, you'll see something over there. The news media will be obsessed with it, and the people will be begging for, you know, they'll be... You know, that will be a time where there'll be more encroachment, uh, police state activity of, you know, basically, oh, there's a killer on the loose. We're going to have to lock down your whole town. Oh, we heard there's a, there's a rapist out there. All of you stay indoors until otherwise you, we're going to put you under curfew. That's actually happening now in the United States. I just figured everyone would be talking about it. You know, in my absence from... From dealing, I didn't want to really deal with this because I just thought there were so many people dealing with it. This is the time of the manifestation of all that we predicted. Everything we predicted is, and I've tried, you know, to find ways of praying to the Lord and asking God, you know, for a reprieve. But the, re the reprieve you're going to get now is the factionalized fighting. This factionalized fighting is going to give people a chance to pause and take a look at the failure of their system. How can they have a new world order if they're busy fighting each other? The answer is they can't. See, they, they you know, and, and how can you focus on banning the Bible, let's say, and turning Christians into martyrs and therefore um, increasing the movement, hello, uh, when you've just turned these people into a bunch of witnesses who are now witnessing to the Lord, that the Lord's using their eyes and ears to, 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 to show them to go, you see, son, you see, daughter, you see what happens when you live this way. You see what happens when you sell out. You see what happens when you go to the other side. You see the failure that they're involved in. You see all the death that's happened. For a long time, there'd be no violence, no nukes, no nothing, because they wanted everyone to think, love, what a lovely world to sell out into. See, nothing's going to happen. These people go on, they're president, they're rock stars, and, you know, there's no consequence, see? Did God really say there would be a consequence, that you really would reap what you sow? Well, how do you know that it isn't, you know, that, that, that lying in the right circumstances and living a lie and all those things is, maybe that's good, maybe that's the right way, because look at what a peaceful world we've had. Okay, that, that sort of mind control meme and that, attempt to cover everything up so it looks like a pla plasticine lovely world that you can just, you know, like going to Epcot Center at Disneyland, you can just become a Stepford robot slave and everything's going to be fine and your belly will be taken care of. In other words, yes, your genitals will be rubbed, your, you'll be filled, you'll be able to drive a fast car, you can be on the beach or whatever the fantasies are. You know, but, but that's, but no more thinking beyond that, please. <laughs> And we'll give you all that bread and circus. And so for a long time, but, but then they got frustrated, you see. They got very frustrated because they wanted to have this thing done by, I don't know, 1988 or something. And, you know, and certainly by the 90s when Bush was screaming and yelling that he wanted a new world order and a thousand points of uh, Hitlerian light. And, you know, where is it? We should have seen it by now. And uh, so then they start going at breakneck pace, realizing that Americans, uh, they've been feeding them drugs, television, propaganda for a long time. Now they're good and soft, good and pliable. Now it's, we can just walk in and take over and, you know, get ourselves elected to their, uh, their stupid offices, uh, take over their stupid military and do what we want. And that's been like a 50-year plan. And they've been going, you know, inch by inch, the teachers, the television, all these things working on softening up the enemy, which is, a, which is an individual citizen in the United States, is already a criminal in their eyes. Someone has to pay for stealing land from the Indians, for one thing. Black slavery and all these ills, and they justify themselves that way. But really, <laughs> two wrongs don't make a right. In other words, saying it's okay to wage a war against Americans because of all the atrocities they did in the past, so I'm going to do atrocities to them. That never works. That just means that that guy is going to die by the sword as he lived by it. But look, all those presidents got together and they waged wars and did 
people got killed who had inside information about what an awful person they were or whatever. And look, they, didn't, they don't even, look, Clinton's just walking around like a peacock still. I'm, you know, I'm joining them, in other words. There has been, that has been a huge campaign. And the evil is shuffled off to the side so you don't see it, you know, swept away like Disneyland. And um, now all that's, good. okay, that's over now. All of this is going to be unraveled, okay, before your eyes. And you're going to be sitting there in amazement because you're going to see there's a whole new rabbit hole that goes way deeper than even, you know, people, and I hate to keep mentioning Alex is the guy that's on the conspiracy, but he did do a good job on the, on the terror thing and waking people up. And so, you know, it, it, he's proven to me over the years that he's, his new, um, not new, but his pronounced faith, let's put it that way, and um, wearing that on his sleeve, uh, you know, he's trying to do the right thing, and I do believe he's earnest. A lot of people told me that he had, was some sort of double agent or mind control slave of somebody, but I haven't seen that. And uh, I, I don't like fear-mongering. A lot of people did it. A lot of people do it, especially around the Christian thing. But obviously, the Christian screaming about the end times and screaming about these conspiracies, some of it has stuck because... Otherwise, you wouldn't be on a list of being, you know, the problem. A lot of it has to do with, yeah, when you walk in truth, you can see all these conspiracies, and that's a threat. We've got to eliminate that. So that's kind of, I believe, the thinking behind getting rid of Christians because they see the truth. And they can speak the word. You know, a real one. I'm not talking about people faking it. And, you know, in a sense, a lot of these people that have been asleep in these pews and these churches... You know, there's a call to repentance now going on, and it's, it's being put on a list that you're, you're, you're going to your church, and then all of a sudden you realize you're evil while your pastor is telling you to worship the government based on Romans 13, and they're telling you you're a terrorist. At that point, you're sort of like, eh, cognitive dissonance, you know, and some of these people are wake, yeah, they're waking up. People are waking up right and left. The big new Brzezinski, he was so upset. He was like, you guys have to hurry up with our new world order because... You know, our, our Novo Ordo Seclorum, our order out of chaos and our secular world order, which underline the word secular, no religion. You better hurry up because people are waking up faster than you can get it done. So now there's this big, huge race. And in that race, the sloppiness has caused the wars between the agencies. And these are fierce, decades-long wars, folks. And they're now ready to spill out in the public. They don't care now. It's, it's gotten so big and so out of control that um, you will see things like this. Now, you may just say I'm fantasizing, and that's fine. But here's my vision. American tank rolls down the, the street, a kind of broken up street, all kinds of violence and terror and looting. And then another tank shows up. It, too, is an American tank. And then a helicopter shows up. It's an American helicopter. And another one shows up. It's an American helicopter. So the tanks and the helicopters start doing battle with one another in the middle of, say, your city. No one knows why that's going on. The news media may for a while say, well, see, these are terrorists who've commandeered one of our tanks. But they're really disgruntled Christians from the military attacking the good people. And it shouldn't be tolerated. They, they may try to spin it that way. But it won't be, because a lot of these factions have nothing to do with religion. That's, that's one, one thing. But, you know, that's a very small part of the pie here. The big part is one turf going after another turf. Money. It's all about money. It's not about ideology. And there may be a little bit of that. I mean, there may be... People saying, I want to get America back. I, I think maybe uh, you might just want to save yourself the effort. I, I don't think there is any going back to whatever it was when, when, when John F. Kennedy was shot, when there was a Cuban Missile Crisis, when bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What point do you want to go back to, friend? <laughs> Before the dollar bill had the Illuminati... Uh, pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Satan on it? I mean, at what point do you, where in the timeline do you want to go? There is nowhere to go. 
You're going to have to go forward, not backwards. But see, they're counting on, you know, setting up a straw man argument that it's really them, the people of Yahweh. They're the problem, you see, without them. You know, and, then, and again, that's where it's always going to go because that's the only thing going on on this planet is whether you're with Satan or whether you're with Yahweh Allah Jesus. If you're, if you're whatever decision you're going to make, or as uh, someone put it, in the New World Order, every single person will be required to have a Luciferic initiation or you will be carted off to a death camp and that will be the end of you. So you have your choice. That's, so ultimately, the New World Order is about taking an oath to Lucifer and then being a compliant slave or being free. It, they want to bring the whole thing right down to that. And, and in the end, yes, it just comes down to that. And that's all it's ever been. Earth has no history. Western civilization has no history. All the art and artists and scientific discoveries have all been, in a sense, vanity and corrupted. It's, there is no pure anything. Um, it, it, there's never really been a civilization. There's been this meme of civilization or a meme of art, a meme of, you know, all art was, in all entertainment and sports and things, just bread and circus. You know, that's all it's... That's all it's been. You know, you get to uh, participate to the extent that you bow down to Lucy. You get to participate, and isn't it great having nice airports and nice life and nice things and everyone knowing where they go and obeying? Well, no one's obeying anymore. You've been sold out, friend. All of you who conformed are now the enemy, and they're, they're getting ready to put a knife in your back. And the thing is, is the Lord's going to have that happen to a certain extent because it's really saving your soul in a sense. But you now have to reap what you've sown. Everyone who sells out to this system, you know, this Babylon, um, has blood on their hands. In other words, it's, it's a collective blood sacrifice, right? It's part of, you know, where do you want to look at wars and rumors of wars and abortions? And, you know, it's everyone who's a part of it, who is part of the hive mind or connected to it, has a hand in that evil, and there is no way to get away from it, except the blood of Jesus washes us clean. Otherwise, we're all pretty much guilty. So we, yes, we do deserve, you know, you've sold out to it, and then all of a sudden they've taken everything away from you, your business, your job, you can't function anymore, you've lost everything. So now you're, now you're mad. You're not mad because maybe there was corruption there, they did it. You're mad because you thought that you were going to be taken care of, and then you weren't by the thing that you gave up something precious. Look, rather than being mad, here's what you've got to do. Get on your knees before the Lord and repent and ask Jesus to wash, your, wash you clean by the blood to, to acquit you of your crime because we all have you know, a collective hand in crime being upon this earth. You go, where was the beginning? The sins of the fathers visited upon the sons through our DNA. We're all connected to evil. Slaying Abel, this war, that war, all the bad things that you see, we all, have a, we all have a connection until and unless we are acquitted. That is, we are set free by the Lord who cuts those ties and um, gives us his righteousness. Uh, this is God we're talking about. And his righteousness pays for us, but it also separates us legally. So it's, it's very important that you understand. Legally, there's no more obligation because you don't exist as the person you were anymore. You've been given a new name in the spiritual dimension and, um, and a new life. And you were set free. They're not going to try you again for the crime. You are, you belong to Jesus. And they don't. <laughs> so they that don't uh, will eventually come after they that do. And and then you say, well, what about where they don't have any religion like Christianity, which is apparently the most vile thing upon the earth, according to the powers that be these days? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it takes on the same form. In other words, there are people that will join the, the criminals and there are people that won't. Those that won't will be looked at like the righteous. They, too, then come under fire. Notice how on the same list you have 
constitutionalists. I remember watching, I watched this whole series called The Following, which was about a death cult. And in the death cult, you know, that was, uh, that the FBI was trying to solve and, and the guy was kind of a flawed guy played by Kevin Bacon trying to solve the crime. And uh, the guy was playing a game with him. In other words, he's, he's, he was writing a, a novel in human blood. All these people dying were part of his writing. So basically, they were uh, people have been recruiting into this club all, from all over the world, it seemed. Lots of members willing to do evil to support the cult leader who was in prison and eventually broke out. Well, when they profiled, when they got a chance to profile some of the, uh, the people who had joined the cult, they, were the, uh, uh, they, they grew up in a, quote, militia. They were, their parents were constitutionalists. That, that literally, no, I kid you not, that's what uh, some of the backstory of some of the cult members was. You know, that they had uh, conservative upbringing, so that's why they joined a death cult. You know, this, this is intended as propaganda to vilify uh, those who believe in the Constitution, those who believe in the Bible, those, those, those kind of people, and to show the public that they're really evil, rabid, you know, stark raving mad people that need to be put down, that need to be, that are criminals. And I never thought I'd see it because it just didn't seem logical 10 years ago that you would have, um, it didn't seem logical to me that you would have people like, like you know, because you know, I had a problem with the churches and I, I felt they were very much tied in with the system and they were very much uh, never going to question anything the government does or the police or anything. They believe that all comes from God. So I felt that that was the best friend that, that you know, the, 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 the corrupt society could have. And yet it turns out now they're being thrown under the bus. Best thing that could happen to them, you'll see them, you know, they, they can't quite believe they're being vilified because they've always pay their tax, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, I'm just saying these people are no threat to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness or their fellow citizens or anyone, you know, they just don't agree with, you know, I mean, traditional ones, well, they're not going to agree with, you know, gay marriage or, um, or abortion. And so, well, therefore they're evil and they should be killed. <laughs> you know, and, and, I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Um, but we're going to set that aside for now. I mean, that's, that's going on, and uh, it wouldn't take much more for that to actually come into the color of law so that you, you're caught with a Bible, you're, 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 you're some sort of... Because Christians, uh, you know, Bible-believing people, let's just put it this way, people that believe in Jesus, and people who have the Holy Spirit, their eyes are open and they see, you know. Um, they see things. They want people to be deaf, dumb, and blind and not see anything and just, you know, uh, they, they tend to look beyond the physical plane. And, uh, you know, that, that's a problem. They tend to, tend to agree with what God says about life. They don't want that. They want to have, um, I know that some of them, what they really want to have is, is everything completely backwards from, from this civilization. They want to have, like, say, only gay marriage. As, as the normal marriage and any kind of heterosexual marriage would be, that would be um, seen as evil. And that's, and, 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 and that's the goal. Well, they'll never get to that goal because it makes no sense. It makes them into absolute idiots. Have you ever tried to talk to these people? They, have, they, they can't put two sentences together. They are so controlled that anything that goes against their narrative that was put into their, their mind control cornflakes Anything that goes against that, they can't handle it. When you're in the truth, you're not left or right, Republican or Democrat, or any of, you know, any, nothing defines you. Everything is, is open to interpretation. Everything is open to be questioned and looked at. Um, there were people in Boston who had uh, a problem with, with people questioning the complete sloppy um, psyop that they tried to pull off. And because they were so sloppy, it just begged the question of not just a false flag, but just look at how, how they, they, you know, finding a lot in the methodology of how they set these things up. And, uh, and then the people of Boston who locked themselves down in a police state for, for a night, and now they're doing this around the country where they're, like I say, if there's an amber alert, everyone has to stand, you know, anything like that. Uh, and people willingly do it. Well, so they willingly... 
you know, so I guess what we saw in Boston was the beginning of the police state where people, but it wasn't a police state by a takeover. It was the people want a police state. And they lock themselves down. There's one guy, miles, could be miles and miles away from certain people, but because he's running around on the street, he's got 9,000 cops after him. And they lock down the city. I mean, that, that's pretty pathetic. I mean, that's, uh, and now at this point, they figure they can lock down every city because once it happened in Boston, it's, it's basically national now. Uh, it, and people, um, I think they called for one yesterday or a couple of days ago, and, and uh, I, I, I didn't look into it. I just heard about it. And uh, uh, there was a, you know, a murderer on the loose, and they, they did the same tactic. And people willingly just went ahead and, you know, uh, and, and did as they're told. And I'm like, in a free society, you do not, you know, there, there is violence. Sometimes there's a murder running around, but we have free will and we have freedom. You don't just tell people to lock themselves inside or, or you'll point a gun at them. Or, you know, that's not America at all. That's not even close. That's a police state. So... You know, the, all this terror, what did the terror do? What did it get them? It got them to be able to lock down anything at will that people would enslave themselves in a police state anytime they're told. In other words, lock down, whatever they say now goes. Um, so they botched it up on the one hand, but on the other hand, they got everything they wanted. In other words, they have complete control. Now, the next thing they wanted to do, like I said, was to make it illegal to be a, uh, a certain kind of person. You know, if you're, I guess if you're, um, I don't know, you know, you know what I mean. You know, if you fit the mold, then, uh, then, uh, then, then you're acceptable. Otherwise, uh, you're out. So that's the mean spirited thing going on. And, uh, it makes no sense and it's completely unfair and it's completely horrifying. And people are listening to things like this podcast or tuning into others and, and trying to figure out how to live. Now, what I'm here to tell you is how to live is, is you just simply stop living on your own and start living via the Lord and let the Lord live. You know, let, let him have your thoughts and your days and let him guide you. I'm sharing a vision with you, and that is, you know, military against military, cop against cop. You know, the, the, the factionalized fighting is going to take over and become dominant. In America, Europe, it just every globally, um, and uh, that war is about to break out. You know, and when it does, it will be. Um, it won't be like it is now, where you have a, you know, a shootout somewhere that you know the public doesn't know about and gets covered up. Oh, I heard shots and I heard machine gun. Well, what happened? Oh, it never happened. It just uh, didn't exist. It's uh, just go back to sleep. Yeah, that sort of th- those days are over. Now these 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 forces are so hostile toward one another. And so, so, so murderously angry and, or so hungry to get that turf that they feel was theirs and was stolen from them that they're, they're willing to even bring to bear the F-16s and everything else. And this fighting will go on at NORAD. It's going to go on at the Pentagon. It's going on at the Pentagon because setting policy against Christians and while well, there's Christians still in the Pentagon, obviously it's going on. But it's not about Christian, non-Christian it, it, at this point. It's more about money. But it's ultimately will become like everything else becomes. Ultimately, it's always a choice between God or death. It's Satan just simply is another word for death. Really, it's between. If you like, it's between life and death. And if you choose death, then they'll they, they, they'll let you live. And um, you know you can just beg for your crumbs. And if you choose um, life, then then they want to get rid of you. And uh, you know you can you can. Uh, You can you can die on your feet or live on your knees. Is that what it, is that what it is? Yeah, something like that. But uh, that, that's the age old way of the world. That this is nothing. This don't you see why we need a savior? There is no getting back on track. It's just whether or not they can keep the focus up, which they can't, which they can't, uh, because these other problems are so big and severe and involves like DHS, involves the military, involves, you know, like faction of the military attacking a faction of DHS and vice versa, fighting over a certain thing that, that never gets, it'll, it'll always be 
framed by the press as being this up against that. You know, these evil Christians against these really good military people, but they, they, they somehow stole the tanks and the planes. No, nobody will have stolen anything. It will all be it will all be quite legal for them to have their tank and the other guy over there to have his tank and this guy over here to have his F-16, that guy over there to have his F-16. If uh, there happens to be a city in the way when they're doing a dogfight, oh well. I guess uh, there'll be some collateral damage. And then they'll be vying, you know, eventually that could then split into a factionalized United States where you have like one territory over here like in Texas or something, and then a territory over there. And the world, you know, this, look, that would be the precursor to civil war, and then civil war would eventuate out of that. You know, in other words, they would become more organized. But uh, um, that's what, that is what will be distracting the world in the next few years. And uh, as the uh, covert war goes more overt, and as I said, a lot of these conflicts have to do with money. They don't have to do with whether you're with God or Jesus or any of that. It's, it's basically money is their God, and they're going to fight over that. So <laughs> I guess Satan, so it would be Satan versus Satan, right? Satan v. Satan. And um, the same thing with the, uh, the administration that's currently there now. They're at war with about 50 other very powerful groups, that, and, and, and you know, that war will eventuate too also. Maybe not with them because they're just active. I mean, the president's really the not the important figure, you know. Uh, either are the other public officials. They're not really, they don't really have any power. Uh, the only power they derive is the power that's given to them for that time when they're president. But, they, you know, then they're, they're kind of like a, a marionette. You know, they go out and they say what they're told and they do what they're told. And they're just, they really, you know, sometimes they let them have ideas and make them think they're shaping public policy and all this, but they have nothing to do with it, really. In the end... Uh, you know, the, the, the powers that be now, they're, gonna, they're, they're only there temporarily. And, uh, and, you know, they're allowed to see a lot of stuff. They're allowed to do things. They, they can, you know, you can fly your drone and go take out, you know, a bunch of kids if you like, you know, or whatever they've been doing, you know, under the guise of, well, we took out the drug dealer. Yeah, and, and about 100 other people. Um, and that's, to me, that's just basically murder. It's just outright murder. You're just being president... Uh, does not give you the right to take a drone on a personal adventure and uh, go kill, you know, go c- create a lot of collateral damage because you feel that this is, I mean, I don't know, it's a gray area, I guess, but, uh, you, you know, he's he's not out of line with tradition in doing that because traditionally we have gone into countries and killed people and uh, murdered them, you know, and we have that on our hands as Americans. Yeah. I'm set free in the Lord, but I still have the karmic, you know, blowback of having my nation torn apart, factionalized, which means nothing's going to work very well uh, because of the things that we've done collectively. You know, it used to be we would do good, but now it's just like, you know, it's every man for himself and everybody is his own God. And so that, that, that can never work because that's what gets you, you know, that's what gets, when your military is fighting your own military and when agencies that used to be friends are fighting agencies, when the whole thing spirals out of control, the social planners will think, good, here's our chance for global government once we subdue this war. Anyway, this is what World War III looks like. And when, then when we say civil war, we go back to Isaiah, we say, you know, in the book of Isaiah, it talks about a day of judgment where everyone's going to be every man against every man, every man running each other through with a sword, you know. And um, uh, also in, in Zephaniah and also in some of the other, you know, all the prophets talk about a terrible day of the Lord. In Mal- Malachi, there's a terrible day of the Lord where, where uh, you know, things will just really heat up. Things are really going to be, you know, harsh. And a part of it is where people become so utterly possessed, logic goes out the window, and they just start butchering, they just start doing each other in. And this has been human history, that ultimately the powers that be, power corrupts absolutely, and then the people that are corrupt, they're never a cabal. They go after each other, and then that's the end of it. Then, then the cycle starts again somewhere else in the world. Um, I'm not su- surprised to see the factionalized fighting. Not at all. I am not surprised. I am, um, if anything, I'm... Um, 
I'm, I actually predicted that would take place about a decade ago. I, I, I saw it. I see it again. Uh, I didn't see it right away back then, I, I, but, but I was right then that these forces were already factualized after 9-11. And um, but they went after each other covertly. Remember when George W. Bush signed a, uh, a, se- a secret order for the CIA to launch a covert war in Iran? You know, the, the, the war has been covert since Bush, you know, with flare ups every once in a while, but basically covert under Clinton in the 90s and under Reagan. It was covert except for the, the whole assassination attempt, which was a which was part of the infighting of, of the government. And, um, and we know we've had our terror attacks and we've had our patsies and the whole thing has been theater, theater, darling, theater. So we've watched the whole theatrical thing take place. I, I just go to like Disney world if you can stand it and, and you'll see that's a metaphor of our world. Nothing is real. Nothing is real here. Everything you see is, is not what's going on. It's, it's, um, you know, if you said that it's about God versus the devil and which side are you going to serve, you, if, if that's all you said about life on earth, that that was the whole purpose of it, uh, and which one you will choose and who you will serve, period, that's the end of the story, I would say you're absolutely right. You have a perfect grasp of world history, uh, the, the nature of humanity, and what the purpose of humanity really is. Which is to... You know, the purpose of humanity is, is this, uh, to, to decide whom you will serve. And, and uh, for me, the whole purpose of life is to serve the Lord. It's, it's not to serve myself because I'm, I'm going to die anyway. So what good is that going to do? I can't, every, every castle I make is made of sand and the tide's going to come wash it away. So what, what's, the only thing I can do is, the only logical move is the Lord, is Yahweh, the, the axis of it all. And, and I know that, you know, for whatever reason, he has our purpose defined, whether to serve him or not serve him. That is the question. Whether to recognize that, whether to grow up or not grow up. Growing up means I recognize it's not about me. That's a, a grown up thing to say. It's not about me. So recognizing that and then making your choice seems to be the pretty much the whole, the whole thing. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it just says, you know, to worship God uh, is the whole duty of man. I mean, that, that's, there isn't any other duty. To serve God is my purpose. I have no other purpose. I, the purpose of humanity is to serve or not to serve him. Um, there is no other purpose to it. Uh, the purpose of, of life on earth is to please God who created it. And he's got a plan and a story and whatnot that he's acting out. And we are all witnesses of. And um, all understanding and all truth will be ours, all of those who serve the Lord. All lies and deceit and, and fiction and fairy tales belong to the Satanists. Who I, Just look at them, how they operate. Uh, whether it's the news media or, or you know, the, the, those people that are setting up um, peaceful people as being the enemy and, you know, nothing is logical with them. The people that are their greatest supporters are now the enemy. Only an illogical person would do that and that's why these empires always fall because at the top, it's, there's no logic that dictates it. It's basically a confusion because their God confuses them. Um. He is not really any God either. He's basically, uh, you know, created by God. He creates nothing. And his purpose is to lead humanity to destruction, into captivity and destruction. And that's, that's the purpose. The Lord, every once in a while, grants him his request and puts the people in captivity because they, you know, when they, when they wander astray, the only thing that's going to get them back on is a reminder of, you know, what reality is, which is it's about the God, not about us. You know, it's it's his bat, his ball, his way. You can choose to serve him or not. Um, you know, if you serve him, you'll know the truth about the nature of life, the purpose of life, the purpose of planets and stars and, and any other kind of purpose you want to look up. He'll inform you. 
or even live the lie and make it up as you go along. And then l- I know people that make up their own reality and they, and then they live in it. And I'm like, how can you play this game? Don't you see what behind the curtain, you know, and they, they convince themselves that, you know, that, uh, you know, there was no ritual. All these are good people. You're talking wild trash. All these are good people. You know, they, they may have flaws and everything, but, you know, they're basically trying their best. You know, and I'm like, no, I'm just talking about one flaw. That is, you know, putting yourself all, all over as a, a good person when in actuality you're owned by the devil. If you're owned by the devil, you're a blight to humanity. I'm sorry. You're, you're a force of, of, of uh, death and destruction and ignorance upon the world. Um, people who are Satanists, wherever they go, they ruin the society. If they go to, um, you know, to California, then they, they, they infiltrate the government. And then it, it, there's a state that had more resources, one-sixth of the world economy. Greatest state could have been its own country ever. And they've actually destroyed all their resources. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. They've actually cut their own throats and enslave their own citizens in California. And nobody seems to have a clue. They're all still uh, uh, locked up in confusion. It is, it is literally unbelievable. But, uh, you know, to whom was given so much to sit there with enough resources to have one-sixth of the global economy and then say that you're broke or you don't know what to do, that, you know, so, so the goal of these people that serve the devil is always to go into wherever there's prosperity or, you know, people living free or anything like that and then start regulating it and taking over and strangle all the businesses and overtax and, and overburden until it finally collapses. And then they, then they, they actually leave because they can't live under their own oppression and they try to find another place and they, it takes them maybe 50, 60 years and then they destroy it. And then they move to another place. And they do this all over the world. But the Bible is very clear in labeling these people. They're called the destroyers. They're called um, earth dwellers. You've heard that term. And in earth dwellers are people that don't see things of the spirit. They don't, they don't seem to, to understand the, the whole, just, just the magnificence of life and the multidimensional qualities of it and the limitless infinite aspects to life that are so wonderful. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't understand, you know, they'll have a base, they'll have an emotion like love, let's say, or maybe it's carnal love for another. And then something will happen and their hearts will want to soar and, and, you know, you want to ask questions and you want to dance around in the stars and, and somehow they'll fall short of that. It'll be like, um, I, I really rather see the Frank Sinatra, um, retrospective or, you know, I, I, they'll, they'll go backwards and somehow they won't be lifted to the stars. They won't be lifted to the, uh, to the, uh, the octaves of, of spirit. Uh, they'll stop themselves because they're programmed not to go there. And then they'll, they'll translate it into something like some, some, some meat pleasure. You know, the, the, the meat body wants this, the meat body wants that. And so they'll do something to gratify the meat body. This is what I, I run into with all these new agers. I, all the new agers I run into, it's always about the sensuality of the thing. Oh, the crystals make you feel so good. You know, I mean, it's, it's never about, you, you think, love and light and spirit. No, no, it's always about the carnal. It's never about the spirit, ever. They're not actually new agers are not are not spiritual. They they think they are, but to them spirit is just another extension of a carnal reality. So this is something that we deal with, and um, that um, you know that continues to amaze me. And uh, I see the events that have happened, as I say, as like a gift of from God to the church. And uh, you all who are listening, you are going to, for the next few years, be like witnesses. You're going to witness the things going on. You're the witnesses. This is not intended for you to, to be harmed. You know, you've confessed your sins. 
you've made amends, you've tried to do better, you've, you've don't, you don't feel great, you're not, you're not arrogant, you're not celebrating yourselves, you're not narcissistic, you're not lying to everybody, and then, and then, and then adding that up is good. You're not playing the game. You know, you're, you're sanctified, meaning you're separated from the whole Babylon thing. You're here as outsiders to be witnesses, uh, to be the eyes and ears of the Lord uh, while the Lord moves. And I think, in, you know, instead of, okay, please. So you're here to be um, I guess kind of in a way like the two witnesses because you'll also be testifying of the Lord's magnificent moving. The The factionalization is a reaping what has been sown, what has been kept secret for so many years because they were in a recruiting phase. So you couldn't have the world as, you know, people crashing and burning anywhere. You know, don't go that way or you'll crash and burn too. They had to have it like, hey, go this way and look, you get to live till you're 90 and you can be like Mick Jagger or you can be like, you know, the presidents, or you could be, you know, these, you see what I mean? What a magnificent life they've had. And at this point, nobody cares. You see, it's, it's, there's, there's a, God's doing a magnificent work here at this point. This is really a magnificent time to be alive because you actually get to see in your face movement of the Lord. I mean, cosmic movements like they've been unseen. Now, there, there is a consciousness about... Um, you know, comets, meteors, possible, you know, extinction events upon the earth based on that. And I would say, I don't say no, but I don't say, you know, it, it's a fluid situation. Anything could really happen. If something like that were to occur, I would not be surprised, but I do believe this has to happen first. There must be this, a reaping what was sown and factionalization, fighting in public is the reaping of what has been sown. They, 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 they've sowed to the lie and deceit and thievery of the people and so forth. So they're not going to have a cohesion in terms of locking the nation down, let's say. I mean, that'll happen, but it, there's no cohesion, no follow-through. You know, there'll be kind of a fits and starts thing over here, and then on the other side, there'll be something else. Um, Weather modification, yes, uh, that will go to the wayside when that, that thing starts up. So maybe the earth can heal a little bit from man's tampering with the weather. I don't know why. Um, I, I think part of this has to do with the stock market, you know, the, the modification of weather and, and so in derivatives trading, you know, to make money. Whenever you look for a money motive, you're, it, most of the time, that hits a lot more than ideology. Money, at the end of the day, money talks and BS walks. Uh, money trumps ideology every time as a motive for whatever's going on on the earth. So I would look to um, money, not ideology, as the bottom line in all of these conspiracies and all the things that you get lied to about from the media uh, about, that uh, it's a money thing. And that's exactly what it is. With the factionalized thing, it's about turf, it's about territory, it's about uh, old past of debts, it's about vengeance. But basically, more or less, it's about money. And of course, with money comes power. So money and power would be the, the, the mode. And it's out of control. And see, Yahweh is laughing while they can't keep their zippers up. And they're completely out of control with each other. And it's ruining their whole thing they wanted to do. So that's going to set them back a good 20 years. And um, I just think, you know, get the popcorn out and en enjoy the ride. Uh, this is Zeph Daniel, and this is a different take than what you've had. Uh, but I just feel it strongly, so I'm going to say it. I, I, I don't know if it's going to end up being prophetic or not. I, you know, I, I've, what I've learned is I can't say anything about anything. I can't qualify myself as anything. You know, if what I've said is prophetic, it, a lot of it seems to be, and probably all of it will end up being that way. Um, who cares? You've got to follow down the path, whatever it goes, you know. I, but I'm saying, oh, you're a teacher, or you're, I'm a, oh, what, what box would you like to put me in? 
uh, evangelist, prophet, this, that, the, 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 the offices of the spirit. Fine, but that's awfully obsessive having to even go over that. You know, suffice to say, I made a couple of predictions today regarding what you'll see. And they're just, there's not a lot to say. I mean, I understand that, you know, most people are struggling. If anything, let this message be this. There's nothing to worry about. They're going to do what they're going to do. If you're led by the Lord to fight back and, and try to get, you know, more a morality thing going, good luck. I, it's hard because um, the earth has been overrun and lopsided a certain way. But the Lord's moving. And equilibrium is what he invented. And he won't let 90% evil triumph. It's the, the reason that evil is triumphing is because the people have turned away from God. When they turn back to God, then they will prosper, but not until then. And at this point, it doesn't look like, it looks like economic pain doesn't seem to matter to them or locking their cities down uh, with, with um, uh, police state drills and such. That doesn't bother them. So I guess, um, you, you know, in Nazi Germany, when they were told to go, you know, to the death camp, a lot of them thought they were going on an adventure. They were going to be taken care of. And they willingly complied. And when they were told to go into the uh, the showers and knowing they'd be gassed a lot, they would just do it. Um, people are told you're going to die. They'll just sit there and, you know, and, and die. Uh, they don't, people don't tend to fight back. It's really weird. Unless, unless they, something has to happen to a people to, to have like the revolution of 1776. Something has to happen to a people where they're willing to, 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 put their lives on the line. Something has to happen. I don't know why my phone keeps ringing. I, I have no idea why. But I'm going to take this as my cue. And I will see you next time.